We don't like hearing problems, but we do like talking about them when they're brought up. And a lot of times people talk about frustrations that they have at their scrapyards all the time. And we've had articles that we've written about this. We've talked about different ways to go about talking to your scrapyard, learning how to be able to understand materials further. But some of the biggest frustrations that we've heard from scrappers uh, is, is really basic things that scrapyards should not be doing and you should try to help them correct or at least point out. And we'll, we just want to talk about a few of them. One thing is not being able to see the scale indicator. Now, if you're loading a trailer and you're going to sell steel or it's in the back of a pickup truck and you're hopping on the truck scale, there should always be a really clear indicator. It should be about three foot wide, big red numbers on it. You should see what the weight of your vehicle is. Now, when you're in your truck, we suggest taking a picture of that weight before and then after when you, you know, put your truck on the scale empty. Why? Well, that gives you the exact weights that they were, or you write them down. But by taking a picture, you'll be able to have photo proof in case there's any type of discrepancy. You know, what we've seen at scrapyards is when they're really busy and there's a lot of customers coming in, you could easily have three or four trucks that are there. And if they put the wrong truck on the, the incorrect scale ticket, you could have a problem. It could be in your favor, but it also could be against you if trucks are heavier than yours. So by taking your own pictures of the weights, it lets you know what your truck weighed in and out at. And that's a really simple, easy piece of advice. Now, if you're inside and you're using a floor scale for non-ferrous, let's say, you should also always be able to see the indicators. Now, most scrapyards have smaller indicators for the non-ferrous scales that are only about a one inch by four inch indicator. So it makes it very difficult to see the weights. My scrapyard, we actually hooked up big indicators. This way, scrappers and customers could always see the weights and just makes it easier both for our staff and our customers to be able to see. But if your scrapyard is not like that, you should ask before they start removing items from the scale to see where the scale indicator is. Now, in the past at Rockaway Recycling, we've had a lot of customers come in with a, a pen and a piece of paper, and they write down their material, they write down their weights, just to make sure that their numbers match up to our numbers. We promote that because it gives our customers the ability to know that we're not hiding anything. But if you have frustrations at your scrapyards where they're not showing you the scales, that's a big red flashing light that you're going to want to ask them to see it because legally they should be showing you things, especially if weights and measures is properly checking their scales. You know, at my yard, we have weights and measures come for our, our one to two time a year inspection from the state of New Jersey. But proactively, we have our own scale company come out every other month to calibrate our scales and make sure that all of our load cells are working properly just for basic machine maintenance. Now, not all scrap yards are like this, so you might want to weigh your material or check your material once in a while before you sell it to the yard because what if they have a problem with their scale and you're able to catch it? Now, another thing that is one of the biggest frustrations that we've heard from scrappers is material classification and material grading. Let's say you have clean aluminum and you call it prepared aluminum or 6061, but they classify it as sheet aluminum. The best thing that you can do is ask as you're going. If for some reason you forget to ask about the different gradings and the classifications as the operators are buying and unloading your material, make sure you look at your receipts before you leave the yard. Once you get your money, once you get your check and you get in your car and you drive away, that material which would be at the top of the pile, at the top of the boxes, within an hour is going to change positions at the scrapyard. More material could be on top of it. It could have gotten dumped somewhere. You got home, you get home after work or you look the next day and you have a discrepancy on your ticket. Now you have to go off of your word versus theirs and you have to hope that your scrapyard is taking pictures of their material, of the materials that they're buying from you. Now, most scrapyards are doing this because they're different state laws that are put in, but if for some reason their cameras weren't working, they don't have good grading classifications or a good explanation, this might be another red flag that your scrapyard isn't gonna be the one that you wanna deal with.
We've seen scrapyards classify aluminum as steel, and they could be innocent mistakes, but these are things that if you can catch them while they're happening, it eliminates the mistake, it eliminates the frustrations, especially when we're now looking at things after the fact, pulling records out, looking at scale calibrations. These are little things that become really big problems. And at Rockaway Recycling, I talk to my staff all the time about little things that become big issues, and you should be taking the same mindset. Is your truck clearly in the middle of the scale? That would be a question that you could ask for a truck scale. Is your material on the scale correctly? Did you look at the indicator to make sure that it showed zero, that there was no tears, no negative balances on the scale before you put your material there? Now, I'm not telling you to have a super level of paranoia where you're questioning every single thing that the scrapyard is doing, especially if it's someone that you've been dealing with for years, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't keep your eye on the material that you're selling and actively be asking questions. These questions should not be an inconvenience for the scrapyard, but it should be part of what they're doing day to day. And if they're not looking to show you the answers or clearly explain them, then you might want to reconsider what you're doing. We've talked to a few scrap yards who tell us that they don't have a lot of scrap yards in their area. We talked to a lot of scrappers, excuse me, who don't have a lot of scrap yards in their area. The ones that they do have, they're not always comfortable with, but with a lack of choices that they are forced to go to the lesser of the evils. But what we tell them is by following the iScrap app, by looking up national prices, by posting prices that they've received, they might be able to find scrap yards that are 30 minutes away, 45 minutes away through the iScrap app that give them a much better deal, higher prices, more aggressive rates, and a much more clear transaction. These little rides that might take you an extra hour in the car could make you hundreds if not thousands of dollars when you look at it over time and not on an individual basis. So think about these things when you have frustrations with your scrap yards and if there's other frustrations that you have, comment below. This way we can address them and give you ideas on how to answer those frustrations, fix those, and hopefully move forward with your yard or find a new yard through the iScrap app that you're happy with posting prices, and really dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks for checking out our scrap videos. By becoming a Patreon supporter today, you'll be entered into monthly giveaways for tools and other products to help you make more money with your scrap.